About two months ago, my neighbor had his cage bearing and his clutch go out in his MS250. And because of that, the sprocket was flopping all around on the uh, crank and uh, dug into the sides of the plastic frame and actually cut the oil line for bar and chain oil. So it pretty much kind of destroyed the saw as he would have just been going through chains and bars like crazy without any oil. Uh, it was decided to repair it. I should have upped my labor charge to make it cheaper to buy a new one because it was a fucking headache is what it was. But I took care of it for him, completely stripped down the machine, uh, you know, I put all the components on a new frame and got it going for him. But I'm starting a new series here on chainsaw maintenance or just maintenance in general. And I figured this will be a good way to start, you know, greasing cage bearings, replacing cage bearings, changing out sprockets. So the first one we're going to do is a standard spur type sprocket on my MS270. Alright, as you can see I've already taken off my side cover, that's the first step. And once you get to this point you really want to make sure you have a clean work area. So I've already uh, gone and blown through this with some compressed air. Uh, clean my workbench, I got some paper towels here set out. You really don't want any uh, contaminants in your bearings. But on here we've got just a C-clip and this washer uh, bracket holder. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take that C-clip off. These things do like to spring. So grab yourself a uh, flathead. And what I like to do is kind of hold my hand over it. So that way when it pops off, it doesn't go shooting across the room. All right, so there's the C-clip. Where's your, your holder? And as long as your chain brake is off, this will come off. If it doesn't come off or get stuck, you probably have a lot of buildup in there, so you're just going to have to work on it and get it out. All right, and as you can see, there we have our cage bearing, our needle bearing for clutch. So there we have our needle bearing. Now that the needle bearing is removed, you want to get a, a clean pair of towel or whatever you use to clean. Make sure that the crank is incredibly clean. You don't want any dirt, particulate matter getting in there. It'll throw out your bearing, cause it to fail. If you're replacing your needle bearing, go ahead and put a little coating of grease on your crank, a little coating of grease on your bearing. Go ahead and slide it back into place. We've got the steel sprocket bearing grease. That's what I use. Seems to work pretty good, but I'm sure there are plenty out there that'll work just as well. Uh, use what you have if you don't have any of this stuff. When applying your grease, this is kind of the method I like to use. Make sure your fingers really clean. Go and squeeze some out. Just coat your crank with a light film. And do the same to your cage bearing. Go ahead and slide back on. Before you go putting your sprocket clutch assembly back on, go ahead and make sure it's good and clean. So again, this is going with the paper towel. Cleaning it out. See, I haven't even really used this saw that much since uh, I took this part last time. You can see it accumulates quite a bit. With a clean paper towel, you also want to make sure to get in the inside here. That's what the outer race of the bearing rotates on. You can tell if you need to replace your spur sprocket by the wear on the gears themselves. This is pretty much brand new, but if you've got pretty deep grooves worked down into those gears, just go ahead and put a new one on. They're not that expensive that you shouldn't uh, just replace it regularly. As a good rule of thumb, I like to grease my cage bearing every time I put a, a new sprocket on. You know, you're already taking it down this far, you might as well go further. All right, when you're reinstalling your spur sprocket, you notice on your homeowner models, there is a small metal bar underneath the clutch. You can kind of just barely see it right there. So when you go to reinstall your sprocket, you really need to make sure that they line up properly with that tab. That's what drives your oil pump. Anytime your sprocket's turning, it turns that bar. And that's what uh, is connected to your oil pump for your bar and chain. So to reinstall it, just make sure that their oil pump drive is lined up. And slide that back over. Should fit down nice down there. All right, from there, we'll just put this holder back on. and reinsert the C-clip. All 
there you go. You greased your your cage bearing. And or changed out your cage bearing and or replaced your sprocket. Good job. All right, that's how you change out a uh, cage bearing and or a sprocket on a uh, homeowner model, spur type. Uh, have a good one, humans.